I want to demonstrate two ways in which you can see phase shifts. So basically, the reason we use phase shifts is that these are the things that you can calculate. Calculating phase shifts is possible. So how do you do that? Um, it will be a two-step procedure. We'll only finish that next time, but let's, let's get started. So suppose you have your wave again, and for a fixed L, a given partial wave, this is the full solution for the scattering problem. It is an AL, JL of KR plus BL at NL of KR YL0. That's your solution. The signal that you got scattering and you have something not true is the existence of this term. Because when there's no potential and no scattering, the solution is valid all the way to r equals zero, and therefore this has no singularity. But this term is saying that this solution doesn't extend all the way to r equals zero, because this diverges. So something non-trivial is happening. So BL is the signal that they're scattering. Now expand for large R. So this is proportional to AL sine KR minus L pi over 2 minus BL cosine KR minus L pi over 2 YL0 1 over KR. It's sim. I'm going to drop all constants very fast. Now, here is my claim. You were thinking of phase shifts. Well, the phase shift is nothing else than BL over AL is minus the tangent of the phase shift. This is a claim. Or, or you could say this is a defin another definition of a phase shift and I'm going to argue that it's the same, actually, than what we did. To do that, I have to just expand a little more. So uh, what I'm going to do is divide by A. So take the A out. A, K, R. Now you have sine kr minus l pi over 2 minus bl over al. bl over al is tangent delta, so plus tan delta l cosine kr minus l pi over 2 yl0. And that is proportional to A over KR tangent delta L is sine over cosine. So let's put 1 over cosine delta L here. Sine KR minus L pi over 2 cosine delta L plus cosine kr minus l pi over 2 sine delta l y l 0 of theta. So that ratio, tangent, I put the sine over cosine, and I have it here. But this, by your favorite trigonometric identity, is equal to well, A over KR, 1 over cosine delta L, sine, a single sine of KR minus L pi over 2 plus delta L. So if this is the phase shift, the solution looks like this, far away, a sine of KR minus L pi over 2 plus a delta L. That's one way of identifying the phase shift. Uh, 
But I want to show that's the same phase shift we had before, but that's clear already. Up to constants, this is, I'm sorry, y l zero of theta. And up to constants, this is e to the i k r minus l pi over 2 plus i delta minus e to the i minus i k r minus l pi over 2 minus i delta. And now I drop everything else. Uh, and now I multiply or take out this phase, take it out. I'm just working up to proportionality, which is all you care at this moment. And this is e to the i kr minus l pi over 2. If I take that out, this becomes plus 2i delta l. And this becomes minus e to the minus i kr minus l pi over 2. And those are the waves we had before, somewhere here. Here, here they are. Can you see them? Still they were here. This wave and that wave with delta here has showed up. So this delta that I've defined here, is the same phase shift we introduced before. So now you have three ways of recognizing a phase shift. A phase shift can be recognized in the partial wave expansion. A phase shift can be recognized by looking at the scattering wave far away and seeing that it takes this form, and you say, oh, here is the phase shift. And the phase shift can be recognized by looking at the solution in terms of spherical Bessel functions, and it's the ratio of these coefficients. Those are the three definitions of the phase shift. Three ways of seeing your phase shift. Instead of elaborating more on this, let's do one example. to convince you that this is solvable and doable, in fact. So the example is a hard sphere example. This is the object that you're scattering off, the potential is equal to infinity for r less than a and 0 for r greater than a. This is the origin and radius a sphere. The waves come in. You want the cross section. OK. It might look like this is hard. OK, well, how are we ever going to solve this? In fact, it will be very easy. We have everything for ready to solve. So let's remember what we have. Well, there's going to be a radial solution, RL. Remember, RL is UL over R. And that takes the form AL, JL of KR, plus BL, NL of KR. That is the general solution for a radial thing. And therefore, your general solution for your wave function, r of theta, is what we were writing here, except that the superposition of them. So I said, here is how you recognize what is the phase shift for a given partial wave. But we're going to have all the partial waves. So this is going to be the sum over L of these things, AL, JL of KR, plus BL, NL of KR, times PL of theta. I could write YL 
zero, but that's up to a constant PL. So that's your general solution. And in fact, I didn't even have to write this because you have there on that blackboard, that's the general solution for the full wave away from the sphere. That's not valid for r less than zero. But this is your full solution for a given partial wave. For all the waves, it's there. OK, so that equation solves the problem. PL of cosine theta, yes. It's, it's really better written like that. Yes, that's more rigorous. Yes. OK, so what do we do now? We use the, somehow you have to use that you have a sphere. You know, we haven't used the sphere yet. So what does the sphere tell you? It tells you that the wave function must vanish on the sphere because it's infinitely hard. It's like an infinite wall. So this wave function should vanish psi at a theta, which is equal to sum over L, a L J L of K A plus B L of N L of K A times P L of cosine theta should be zero. OK, one equation for infinitely many unknowns, but the PLs are a complete set. If you expand the function of theta in terms of PLs, you can determine every coefficient. They're linearly independent, the PLs. So if you can think of this, this is at A, this is just a number. So this is a sum of numbers times PLs must be 0. All the numbers must be 0 because the PLs are independent. Therefore, here, we have that AL, JL of KA plus BL, NL of KA must be 0 for all L. And therefore, tangent delta L, which is minus BL over AL, has been determined. The tangent delta L is BL over AL. And that's equal to BL is JL of KA over NL of KA. Done. All phase shifts can be computed. The Bessel functions are known. You look them up. You calculate them to any accuracy. But you have here all the phase shifts. Therefore, you have the cross section of the sphere. You have the differential cross section. You have anything you want. It has all been determined. We can do a little bit of algebra. If you, have, uh, if you want to calculate what is sine squared delta of something, sine squared can be expressed in terms of tan squared. It's tan squared delta L over 1 plus tan squared delta L. So it's our JL squared over JL squared plus NL squared. Tan L, you substitute this and you get that. Therefore, uh, the cross section can be calculated and the differential cross section can be calculated. It's pretty interesting. Um, um, let's do it here. The cross section, remember sigma, is 4 pi over k 
sum over L equals 0 to infinity to L plus 1 times this sine squared, so JL of KA squared over JL squared of KA plus NL squared of KA. So that's uh, your full cross section. Um, if KA is very small, KA much less than one, that small K, that small energy, long wavelength approximation. Uh, this formula is interesting for high energy, for low energy, for intermediate energies. The angular dependence is interesting. It's uh, lots of things you could look at. Let's look at low energy. Um, you need the expansions of these quantities for small things, and they're easy to find. Basically, this remains finite. This becomes infinite. It dominates. It's, it's not difficult. I'll write what one gets. It's 4 pi over k squared, sum over L equals 0 to infinity, 1 over 2 L plus 1, 2 to the L, L factorial, 2 L factorial, it's lots of, a mess of factorials, I'm sorry, k A to the 4 L plus 2. And here is to the question of convergence. If Ka is much smaller than 1, in this case, this was the approximation, that will sure converge. The powers go up and up. So uh, for L equals 0, it is interesting, is the dominant one. So L equals 0 only, sigma, turns out to be 4 pi over k squared. And all these factors just give you a 1 for L equals 0. And the Ka squared, A squared, Ka squared, which is 4 pi A squared, which is a pretty cute answer. This is the low frequency cross section. If it's a long wavelength approximation, the cross section of the object it's not the apparent cross-section, which is the diameter, but it's actually the full area of the sphere, 4 pi a squared. People try to imagine why it is. It's almost like the wavelength is so big that the wave wraps around the sphere and gets stuck there. So the, the sphere captures proportional to the area of the whole thing. So we'll see more of that uh, next time.